Hi guys, welcome back, and this is your first time here. I'm the Northwest Fisherman Chris, and today we're going to be doing the Mystery Tackle Box Elite Bass Box. And I already basically already did the unboxing, but forgot to turn the camera on. So some of this won't be completely in its package. Alright, let's start the things off. Let's see what we got. So starting out, we have the Baby Bull Shad from Mike Buka. 3.75 inch guy, slow sinking, and this is in a threadfin shad color, which is pretty sweet because I don't have this baby bull shad, and I actually really like the baby bull shad. So it's got like that purplish back. The whole bait is semi -trans, um, transparent. Of course, you've got that light gold line going horizontally across the bait, and the belly is pearl white. Okay, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so the thing that I really like about, about the baby bull shed, you can fish this because it's so, it's small enough and it's light enough. I think this is, um, it doesn't say what weight it is, which is sort of annoying. Anyway, just take my word for it. This thing is light enough. You can throw this on your normal crankbait rod. Uh, so if you have like a medium fast or like a medium moderate, it works fine especially with it being slow sinking. So this thing has a super slow rate of fall. You can part a lot of action on it, and it's a really nice downsized swim bait. Um, I I really like the bull shad. I've had quite a bit of luck on it, and I haven't broken any of the hooks on them or anything like that. The color that I typically use the most is my... I have a rainbow trout version of this, and then I have a couple bluegill ones. Um... But this Threadfin Shad, this will be really neat to try out. Um, it's got a nice, durable, whiskery tail. This is this is a great bait. They're kind of expensive, but it's a swim bait. Hard swim baits are expensive. And this one's... It's not amazing, but it's really good. Alright, moving on. Uh, choo -choo. Yeah, the other hook fell. Okay. So this is a spare point EWG hook. I like these quite a bit. Um, let's see if I can find the one that fell out. Oh, I found it. Can I get it out? Because there's only two in this pack. There we go. So what's really neat about the spare point hook, uh, where'd that, yeah, here's your regular EWG. So we're gonna set them side by side. I believe this is a four aught Stout from Six Sense next to the three yacht. Maybe this is a three yacht. I don't remember off the top of my head right now. Yeah, this is a three yacht too. So these are both three yacht EWG style hooks. Now, what's really useful about the spear point version is that when you're fishing like worms or anything that's more of a slender profile, not so much like a fatter profile, when it sits on this angle here on the hook it's a lot easier for it to stay there and you don't have to fix it and you don't have to it's not as hard on the bait as a regular EWG style hook because it's got that extra added angle that helps hold it um, here I'll actually I'll grab one of my other favorite things out of this box so these are Carl's Amazing Baits it's a June Bug Gig Worm these are pretty cool These work great. I'll talk about these more in a second when I finish with this hook. So you'll rig this up, start out, just like a regular way that you would Texas rig a, a, uh, a worm or whatever. Go through the top, spin it around, pull it up. I like to go a little bit deeper so I can completely cover that knot. Spin it, rotate it over. So this is what I'm talking about covering the knot. See how you can't see the eye of the hook anymore? I like it inside the bait. It's just a personal thing. So with this extra added angle here, you're going to keep that in mind. So go in there and you're going to come out on that ridge. So it's going to go just like that. You're going to text pose it, of course. And it's going to be just like that. Now this, because the way that the hook cuts that angle through there, this isn't really going to try to go anywhere. You know how sometimes when you're fishing a Texas rig, the bait will rip itself from the Texpos and it'll fall down and look kind of stupid and 
then you catch on stuff. With these spear point hooks, that doesn't happen, which is really useful. However, these spear point hooks aren't as heavy of a gauge wire as a lot of traditional EWG style hooks, but this, this is an added bonus. I really, really like this a lot. This is fantastic. But while we've got the worm out, we might as well talk about the worm. Because I really love these curly tail worms. I don't care what brand makes them, if they're Zoom, if they're Yamamoto, if they're Guggen, if they're insert brand. They could be a net bait, it could be a big bites bait. These are fantastic. So the cool thing about these are you can fish them like this on a Texas rig. Okay. Pull this off of here real quick. Then you can trim this down if you wanted to, to use it as like a nice long trailer for like a spinner bait, which is fantastic and super exciting. You can leave it long. You can throw it on a jig. And while it's falling, you get all that action from the tail. And when it sits on the bottom, it's going to do the cool tail thing in the water where it's going to just kind of barely move. You can fish this on a shaky head, Carolina rig, Texas rig. You, you kind of just put a hook in it as long as as long as it's not a drop shot or you could even wacky rig this because this has got a fair amount of density to it and just let it fall and then pull it up but I wouldn't recommend drop shotting it because once you get to that drop shot position it's kind of gonna keep falling but yeah I I like big worms I used to not be a big fan but I love the little grub tails, the shorter ones, like the three inch guys or the two and a half inch guys. And I started thinking to myself one day, it's like, why do I buy these little ones and buy these when these can essentially do all the same jobs just as well, if not in situ certain situations better than the little grub tails. Now I still get the little grub tails, but I have a lot more of these and they're, they're fantastic. I, I really like big worm baits like that. They're super versatile. Okay, so next up, <clears throat> we got the Excite Baits Reflex Skipping Jig and 3 8 ounce. And it does not give us a color, but luckily for us, it's kind of obvious what color this is. It's a bruised green pumpkin. So it's got just a hit of blue in the skirt I don't know how well that's going to show up. And on the head of the bait, it's got a little bit... Oh, there's a really nice blue strand right there. Right in there. So this isn't a hand tie skirt or anything like that. It's just... This is a nice skipping jig. I like this jig a lot. And then as far as the hook, got a nice stout. Looks to be about a 4 aught hook. And then as far as our hook keeper goes, it's got a really tall, aggressive molded hook keeper or bait keeper which is awesome and the weed guard on it it's it's on the softer side of perfect but it's it's right and it lines up lines up perfectly it's good bait it's a really good jig I like that and then after that we'll do this Guggen thick flipping jig color is this guy here cowboy craw nice big five odd hook what's the weight on this half an ounce which unfortunately it's kind of weird because Guggen base usually have it printed oh no it does just barely it's written in gold but it says half ounce right there kind of a poor color choice for that but it's fine so it's got a nice hand tied skirt it's a really nice skirt I like this color it's cowboy craw because it's not, it's that, it's like that nice muted bronze color, that's good for like, sh like cloudy days, or like tannic water. I like to fish bronze colors in tannic water and on cloudier days. Same with white and stuff. But I'm not a big green pumpkin on cloudy days because I feel like it's just, it's that little bit, that little bit too dark. But this is great. So let's go ahead and check out that weed guard. So with the Guggen baits, as much as some of you hate the hate Guggens, 
but this weed guard is nice and flat so it, most of the bristles go horizontally versus like on the excite bait where they're all kind of just in one spot there's not really more bristles in this one than there is in this one it's just that they're lined up in a row which is better because it gives you that overlap protection on both sides from weeds which is pretty sweet and the weed guard is on a little bit on the side of a little heavier than I would consider perfect but this is a great bait let's check out those hook keepers so this one has dual hook keepers on it I don't know how well you're gonna see it so it's got a wire hook keeper farther back and then it's got a nice molded hook uh, bait keeper hook keeper why do I keep saying that bait keeper on the bottom here this is a solid jig it's a nice jig it's a really nice jig and I really like the color okay so next we got the 10,000 fish Yoda worm with that irresistible tickle tail and a 4.75 inch guy get this guy out what's the color on this green pumpkin pearl okay so I have this one I actually bought this one a while ago and I really like this color and this bait I actually it's pretty good it's pretty good but you're gonna want to use it not so much in the ways that it suggests okay so on the back of the box here it's gonna tell us to fish on a bladed jig or a spinner okay on a spinner bait I completely agree because it gives it those times that you don't want to run a paddle tail this is a perfect fill-in you can trim this down a little bit get rid of that head and then just have this as that extra mass like we talked about in my spinnerbait video um, now for fishing this on a Texas rig or a drop shot uh, I you could power shot this but I think there's better baits that you could power shot than this and for, as far as a Texas rig I just I don't know if I agree with Texas rigging this I think there's a lot better baits that you can Texas rig. There's better baits in this box that you can Texas rig and better baits in this box that you could drop shot. Um, but this is a fantastic trailer. I also like putting these on jigs. Just kind of trim it down and throw it on however you want. Because it's it's subtle and it can be kind of finessey. And that tail just... It's, it's great. These are pretty great. And I love this color. So that's a, that's a solid choice for a bait. Now we were talking about drop shot stuff. Now we got this net bait 4.75 contour worm. This contour worm is in watermelon red. You get 10 of them in this bag. And this bait is pretty cool. So it's kind of got like a triangular shape to it. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that. But triangular shape but one side is much flatter than the other sides okay um, I found this to be really cool for a shaky head and for a drop shot because this it has this it's got this cool action to it that just when it falls in the water column this tail doesn't really it doesn't kick it doesn't flicker it just kind of it does like a snake like maneuver kind of and if you can throw it slow enough like if you wacky rig this and fished it weightless it's really good and this color this is a fantastic color green pumpkin with red watermelon red this is this is great that's a that's a great bait that's a good bait right there okay bandito bug and baby blue 3.3 junior guy nine of them shoved in here let's check this out so a lot of you guys really hate the Guggens like that's a well-known thing and there's some people that are like oh I don't use Guggen baits because they're they're too flimsy and they fall apart yet they're the same people that pay twice as much for Yamamoto baits I'm not harsh on Yamamoto baits I'm just saying that you can't really hate on a bait for being cheaper than Yamamoto and is also pretty much like a two three fish bait okay 
That's just, that's not right. So this baby blue color is pretty neat. So on one side, it's essentially a green pumpkin, okay? So you got your little kicker claws, you got your little legs. They all impart a lot of action, and it's really, really cool. Now, the thing about the Bandito bug is it's so versatile, and this thing is all lubed up with their special cilantro sauce. The other side's got that pearlescent blue on it, but you can fish this a hundred million different ways. You can Texas rig it. You can Carolina rig it. You can use it as a jig trailer. You can use it as a spinnerbait trailer. You can use this as a chatterbait trailer. You can use this on anything that you can put a hook through on this. The only thing I wouldn't do with this, because of its weight, is a drop shot. This makes a great wacky rig. Just nose hook it and go. Now, when you're using it as like a spinnerbait trailer, or yeah, a spinnerbait trailer, I like to rip these legs off trim it down to right about where those front legs are, throw it on there like that so these claws are kicking sideways. It works fantastic. Like, the Bandito bug is, they're right, the bug is the drug. This, this really works. And it's super soft, it's pliable, they're heavily salted, they're heavily, I mean, look at my, look at my hand, it's shiny. You can hear it. But, yeah. You can hate on the Googans all you want. You can't deny that the bandito bug catches fish. You might only get like two, three, four fish on a bait, but let's talk about that realistically here for a second, okay? Let's just say you catch three fish on each one of these bugs, all right? This junior pack has nine bugs in it. That's 27 fish for six bucks. Unless you get it on like discount at uh, like Dick Sporting Goods or Bass Pro or insert wherever you shop. That's not bad. No matter how you split the, split this, it's cheaper than Yamamoto. Is it better than Yamamoto? I wouldn't say that. Would I say Yamamoto is better than this? I wouldn't say that either. But this, this is a good bait. For the price, it's a really good bait. And as far as colors and sizes go, it's it's a good bait. You you can hate on the Googans. You can't hate on that bait, though. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, we got our last one. Okay, so I've been kind of dancing around this one. It's the 13, fish, uh, 13 Fishing Jabberjaw 60. Um, I actually got this bait in my December box last year from MTB in the Elite Bass Box. Um, yeah, same color and everything. 60 series, 9 16 ounce. It's got that floating metal bill. Kind of like reminiscent of a chatterbait, but it's square bill. I fished this thing pretty hard. I had a couple hits on it, but it, it never produced anything for me. I'm going to try throwing this thing again here when we get closer to pre-spawn and spawn and see if I can get a hookup on it. But as much as I would really love to like the metal bills, like this, the Axis, all the other copycats of the metal bill, uh, square bills that are supposed to chatter like that, I just, I don't have a lot of faith in this being I've well I've had the opposite experience that this is not better than like a traditional square bill guy dies down four to six feet killer colors killer paint scheme on paper this thing should be amazing but that bill doesn't do it it just doesn't do it I don't know doesn't really have a rattle all of the sound is produced by this slip I don't know what the deal with it is, but I never truly had any luck with it. And it's identical. Only difference is this one has a couple teeth marks on it. Um, flip through here real quick. What all we got? Oh, here we go. We got a card. Where to fish the 13 fishing jabber jaw. Matted grassy cover, down trees, submerged timber, under bridges off of primary points, 
um, grassland weeds, riprap, tree stumps, all the normal places you would fish a square bill. They recommend a medium heavy casting rod. Yeah, you can do it on a medium heavy casting rod. I think more realistically you should throw it on a medium and it doesn't really matter if it's casting or spinning. It's If you're comfortable fishing square bills on spinning, fish it on your spinning. But I don't think you have to have a medium heavy to throw this. And it says moderate speed casting reel. So they're talking about like a six two to or seven two to one gear ratio or you could get away with maybe like a six zero spinning gear ratio more than enough they're saying fish on 12 to 17 pound fluorocarbon i completely agree with that and here's a bunch of facts about it pivoting metal blade creates flash and sound how much really though hd holographic eyes all mine had the little black dot, both of them. You got the identical same little black dot eye. Ultra high definition finishes. Yeah, the finish on this, the paint scheme on it, is killer. It really is a really great color. I just, I'm not in love with it. Or any of the metal build crankbaits. I mean, I don't know. There's just something about it. I'm, I'm not sold on it. All right, let's get this cool sticker. This, this, this new sticker. I don't, I don't have this one. License to reel. Let's get a little tackle box. I, I think this is really, really cool. I really do like this sticker a lot. Just admit it. We're all children. We like the stickers. All right, we got our little dibble book here. Thunderbolts and lightning don't fish in lightning. Five fishing tips for bass fishing in tough conditions. Know your water temperature. Know your gear like crankbaits, jerkbaits, swimbaits, and spinnerbaits. Key on those rough days. Safety. That kicker fish is not worth landing if it's going to be your last fish. Like last, last fish like your dad. Just stay safe because that water is cold and dangerous. Preparation and persistence. Go slow and be methodical. The water's cold, the fish ain't fast. Bobber fishing, browns and bows. Okay, so that's about trout fishing. And I've done a couple videos about that. I might link one down below. Um, lure selection, lure color selection 101, water type location, forage species. Match the hatch. Think about clarity. If it's super clear water, stay in your stay in your silvers water gets a little dirtier or it's overcast go to brassy copper colors maybe still try both um depending on your water you'll know when you get there and then your location pick good spots don't leave home without three lures for salt water fishing shrimp spoons and swim baits completely agree how to choose the right color ice fishing lure match the hatch water clarity snow cover it's yeah yeah uh, when should I add a stinger hook add stingers when you're getting bites but they're not you're not getting fish caught that's that's your best time to add a stinger or Another times that I'll add stingers is when the water's really cold, just to get beyond that process. But if I catch a couple and they've hooked up on both hooks, then I'll I'll ditch that I'll ditch the stinger. Um, four ways to be a better net man: have the net ready and nearby. Uh, give your buddy enough room to fight the fish. Don't rush the landing. Let the rod do the job. And don't lunge forward and stab the fish instead of using a scooping motion. Pretty simple. And there we have it, guys. That is the December Mr. Tackle Box Elite Bass Box in its entirety. This is actually pretty good. The only thing that I'm not super happy about is that the most expensive thing that came in this box 
is something I well the second most expensive thing because I didn't I didn't do this card most expensive thing 15 bucks for the bull shad that's kind of to be expected um, yeah but 12 bucks for that jabber jaw that that kind of that kind of sucks considering I especially already have it in that color from MTB out of this box bandito bug six bucks can't argue almost six bucks for the yodo worm I like the yodo worm some a lot of people probably don't but it's it's that niche bait it's that in-between bait skipping jig for 550 okay I mean for 550 I would have rather had a hand tied skirt but it's fine Guggen squad thick jig for five bucks even yeah, it's a $5 jig. That's a good jig. The Hustler Worm. This guy. Five bucks. Deal. I don't even know how many is in there, but I'm already sold on. Because I think there's like 10 or 15 in there. Uh, Netbait Contour Worm. four twenty nine. Good. The Spear Point Performance Hooks. Okay, so this is one thing that I like because I get... I have a fair amount of these spear point hooks at a dollar eighty that makes these hooks ninety cents each that makes them a dollar each and for a hook that's not a heavy wire and it's kind of what I would consider a situational hook it's not the hook that you're going to use every time I feel like that's a little steep but I'm glad I get them this way and I'm not buying them outright because buy a pack of five of these for five bucks that would that would kind of be lame but yeah, there we go. And we are all done with this guy. So let's throw all this back in here real quick. And I want you guys to just remember, stay safe on that water, man. That water is unforgiving. It's cold. And it does not take a lot to go into shock. So wherever you're at, just be smart about it. All right, guys. Tight lines and take care. See you later.